inspiring interviews with today's top landlords. This is the Rental Income Podcast. And now, Dan Lane. I got an email recently from a member of the Rental Income Podcast community, and he had a really interesting question. He was telling me that he owns 10 rentals, and he's been able to replace his W-2 income with just 10 rentals. And he was curious why people build bigger portfolios. Sometimes we have people on the podcast that have 50 or 100 or 200 rentals, and he just didn't get why somebody would feel the need to build such a big portfolio. And, you know, I I 100% agree with them. You can definitely reach financial freedom with a much smaller portfolio. So why take on the risk and the, the aggravation of having a bigger portfolio if you can really live the life of your dreams with a much smaller portfolio. So I want to explore this and see if we can get to the bottom of it today. So joining us on the podcast today from Minnesota is Corey Binsfield. Corey's been on the podcast a couple of times before, and he owns over 100 rentals. And I want to find out why, you know, why, why did he feel the need to build such a big portfolio? So we'll get into that. We'll talk about some of the numbers and find out why he does what he does. So let's take a real quick break. We'll get a word in from our sponsors. We'll come right back and we'll talk to Corey. The first step in buying a rental property is to get pre-qualified. And I would suggest you work with a lender that specializes in working with investors because the last thing you want to have happen is to get to closing and find out the money's not there and you can't close. The lender that I recommend is Chaley Ridge from Ridge Lending Group. She's a nationwide lender, and she'll pre-qualify you for free if you mention Rental Income Podcast. Find out more today. Contact Chaley at RidgeLendingGroup.com. That's R-I-D-G-E, LendingGroup.com. NMLS 42056. Are you looking for actionable steps to create wealth and passive income? As a top-ranked business and investing podcast with over 800 five-star reviews, The Passive Real Estate Investing Show is packed with strategies and insight for putting money in your pocket. Marco Santarelli from Narada Real Estate Investments brings his expertise and knowledge on both passive and turnkey real estate investing, and he provides listeners with helpful tools and tips to create the wealth you've always wanted. Head over to iTunes or Google Play today and subscribe to Passive Real Estate Investing Podcast, or visit PassiveRealEstateInvesting.com. That's PassiveRealEstateInvesting.com. Hey, Corey, welcome back to the podcast. So for anyone that hasn't heard your appearance, and you've been on the show two other times, um, yes. give us a real quick bio so everyone kind of knows who you are and, and where you're coming from. Okay, my name's Corey Binsfield. I live in the Midwest. Um, I'm a financial advisor, and on the side, I started buying real estate. Bought my first uh, house hack back in 1998, and the goal was to uh, build a portfolio of 10 duplexes in 10 years. I hit that early, and as a result of that, I decided to 10x the portfolio because it was kind of fun. And so now, at this point, um, I'm still a financial advisor, but the real estate portfolio is up to around 120 or 121 units. So let me just ask you, why do you have so many rentals? Like, Why did you grow your portfolio to the size that it's at? Yeah, that's God, that's a tough question because I totally agree with the listener in that, hey, I've got you know 10 doors and when is enough is enough. I've replaced all my income. And I actually faced a similar quandary when I got up to my 10 duplex goal. But at that point, I hadn't replaced 100% of my income, probably about 50% of it. So what I ended up doing was saying, well, running 10 duplexes, which is technically you know 20 units, is I've been doing it in my spare time. It's pretty easy. Why don't I 10X this thing and see what happens? And so I decided I wanted to replace more than 100% of my income. And that way, if I ever got super tired of being a financial advisor, I could just hang it up and have more than enough money to retire on. Okay. So, and retire early, I guess. So, so at 20, at 20, so if you were at half your income at 10, by the time you got to 20, was that fully replacing your income or equal to your income? Well, no, I had. 
because I had 10 duplexes, technically it was 20 units. Okay, okay. So that's where I was at, about half the income. Okay. And then I started going after, um, after the 10 duplexes, I started going after small multifamilies. So I started going after like four units, six units, eight units, tens. And that's when it, it started to snowball. And all of a sudden, I got to the point where I had replaced 100% of my income. And at that point, I just remember running some numbers and the number just doesn't make sense. It just sounded super cool. And the goal was, huh, if I could have a million dollars in rents a year, that would be the best thing ever. Yeah. And that's when um, I just pushed towards that goal. And it's kind of neat. I ended up being in a book, you know. Yeah. So called- when you got there, was it? all you expected it to be or were you were did you immediately get to a million and then think well how can i get even more um well the angels weren't singing the clouds didn't part it wasn't like whoa you know <laughs> <laughs> but i must admit i was really pumped once i hit that number yeah, which but- i hit about 2 years ago and at that point uh, I basically had the same question that your uh, listener had, which is when is enough is enough. And so I decided to kind of reset my goals. And I've actually been working on this hard over the last um, six months or so. But that's when I looked at the entire portfolio and said to myself, you know what? Okay, I hit the million dollar goal. How can I make things even better? And that's when I started to pull a little bit of a Dame, Dave Ramsey and started to snowball some of my credit lines and just through you know just a quick analysis and all of a sudden i started geeking out on a spreadsheet i came up with a snowball plan where if i paid off the short-term line of credits that i have for just you know operational stuff and purchasing properties i could free up uh well i'd be able to pay off about three hundred fifty thousand in less than three years Wow, and that free up about ten thousand a month in extra cash flow, and that's wow. where things get really interesting. Yeah, I mean, because you think, I mean, how many more units would you have to buy to add ten thousand dollars to your bottom line? Like, if if you yeah, didn't pay that and off, and that's a key point. It's your bottom line. It's not just oh, I got ten thousand in cash flow. It's like what's actually in my pocket right. after all right. expenses, and that's. That's easily a 30 to 50 unit, you know, multifamily. Wow. And wow. so that was kind of my aha moment where I'm like, you know what? This is like buying a, you know, 40 or 50 unit. So, yeah. I mean, and it's a lot less work. I mean, you're not having to add 40 or 50 units to your workload because you, you self manage everything. Right. So, like, to have the same cash flow by just paying off your debt. I, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, now the other challenge I'm facing, and this happened last year, I, I, I was just kind of stunned, but for years I've paid very little in taxes due to depreciation write-offs mm-hmm. as well as, you know, I've been doing a lot of improvements on the portfolio. I mean, I'm easily spending 150,000 a year in what we call CapEx, you know, mm-hmm. capital expenditures. Yeah. And what I've known, what I've been noticing is that as I've been paying down debt now, and I know this sounds crazy, but because I've been paying off the debt so fast, my taxes are going up. Mm. And so that's going to be my next challenge is, okay, now I got a budget for higher taxes. And I know in the back of my brain that the simplest way to solve that issue is to go buy a 20 or 30 unit. So right. we'll see what happens. <laughs> right, right. But, you know, you, you're paying more taxes at the end of the day because you're making more money. Right. So, yes. yep. so like, is it but really, I was just shocked because, you know, my depreciation is running over 200,000 a year. So you're just like, huh, how yeah. can that not gobble up all these goofy taxes? Right. Right. They come up with. So. Now, if you were to go back, cause it, it seems like paying down the portfolio is kind of your priority right now. But yeah. if you were to go back in time, would do you think it would have been better off to have switched over to paying down the portfolio earlier, or do you think you needed to get to the size you're at today before you you could have started to do that? 
That's a good question. I think if I had to do it all over again, I'd do exactly what I did. And the reason being is I'd rather control more units mm-hmm. okay. with debt than have less units with less debt. Right. Okay. Because the more units I have, the more diversified I am. And like right now, I had a, a roof leak. And it's a flat rubber roof, which is the most expensive version, unfortunately. It's the dead of winter, and they have to shovel off the roof as they replace it. And it's going to, you know, this roof's going to run 16 grand. And, you know, if you have more units, you have more ways to basically pay for that unexpected expense. Right. You know? Right. Totally. Yeah. You're way more diversified. I mean, having just a couple of units is almost kind of the most dangerous thing you can do it really is yeah i mean if you lose one or two tenants and you have let's say four units there goes half your cash flow and you're going to be scrambling to make mortgage payments right now the dave ramsey approach would be to save up money and buy your places with cash yep but at the same time dave ramsey it, it seems like he's mainly working with people that have gotten themselves into a lot of debt and he teaches his debt snowball to pay everything off. So right. you're you're kind of um kind of like a hybrid between the two because you used a lot of leverage to buy the properties. Do, do you think that if you had actually followed Dave Ramsey's plan and saved cash and bought every property with cash, do you, do you think like where do you think he would be today? I I'd be lucky if I had two buildings. Wow. I mean, cause yeah. imagine trying to, if I look back at some of the properties I bought back in the late nineties, I was able to pick up, let's say a duplex for 90,000 today. You know, we're not in a hot market, but they're worth doubles so let's say 180,000. But I just can't imagine saving $90,000. I mean, that's going to take at least 10 Forever. years, Yeah, you know? Right. For right. most people. Right. And so, I wasn't a huge earner when I started this either. Now, over the years, as, as you've built your portfolio, you've built up more and more rental income. And you're at the point where you don't have to work if you don't want to. I mean, you, you could definitely leave your job and support yourself off the rental income. Why do you still have a full-time job? I actually, I enjoy it so much more now than I ever did. And... The neat part about it is the I need an office now for my real estate portfolio, which mm-hmm. the job provides. I need an assistant, which the job provides. So there's a lot of shared expenses okay. there. And the best part is now back in the day when I was, you know, building up the financial advisory practice, it was like, you know, I was I just tried to get anyone to become a client, you know, just hoping they'd hire me. And now I'm at the point where I'm like really selective on who I take on as a client. And basically I only work with fun, fun people that I can, that truly feel that I can help them out, you know? And so it takes on a whole new level. It's like you call up a a client and you're like, God, I love talking to this person. They're just so fun. You know what I mean? And so so I had a client in today and I hadn't seen her in like two years and she comes in, gives me a big hug and we just... I think we talked about 10 minutes of finance and another 50 minutes of just banter and life. Wow. You know, it was, it was a blast. So. so do you think because you don't need to go to your job that like if you woke up tomorrow and said, you know what, I'm done with the, the financial advisory work. I, I don't want to do it anymore. Like just knowing that you could be done with that at any point, do you, do you think that makes you enjoy it more because you're not oh, doing yeah. this because you have to. It's the to. greatest feeling yeah. in the world. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting to watch a lot of these people will leave a job that I don't think they necessarily hate it, but they're just like, I want to retire early. But then they end up always getting a side hustle. And I actually view my, uh, originally my real estate was my side hustle. And now that's morphed into a whole full blown business. And now my financial advisory business is like my little scrappy side hustle. Right. It's pretty fun. Now, the the way that you've got your rental portfolio set up, it doesn't really take that much time, right? No. It so, goes 
the most amount of time is when I acquire a building and we're, whenever I acquire a building, I typically am picking up something that's in a lot of distress. And so it's just, it turns into just, un, I wouldn't say a nightmare, but just a lot of, a lot of stress, you know, taking down units, remodeling, getting rid of bad tenants, putting in good ones. So, so once you do that, so you do the work up front, you, you buy a property that's run down, maybe been neglected by the prior owner, you right. fix it up, make everything new and nice, and then you don't have to think about it for a long time. Yep. Cause I look back at like my original 10 duplexes and to this day, those things, there's, there's just so little work. I mean, it's just, it's shocking if I had just that 10, those those 10 buildings, if that was just my entire portfolio, um, I'd probably spend maybe two, three hours a month on it. I mean, it's just, yeah. and that's, that's the goal with the entire portfolio is get everything optimized so that I could, I should easily, easily be able to run it in like, I'd say, I don't know, do like a, you know, a Tim Ferriss four hour work week, I guess yeah. would be the goal of that. So. And so what kind of, um, like, can you give us some of your, your tricks for managing your portfolio? Um, like, do you yeah. have everyone on ACH, for example? Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah the biggest one, the, the biggest game changer for me was software in terms of actually purchased property management software. And fortunately, I did that in the very beginning. And now the software has evolved so much that right now I'm using a program called Appfolio which is really designed for people with 500 units or more, but it's just, it's amazing. All the tenants pay online. I get maintenance requests online. I then forward the maintenance request to my contractors and the leasing is online. So all I have to do is go out for a showing and then they text me, we like the place. How do we, you know, rent it? So I send them a link to an online application and if they're approved then they basically click and sign the email that we just sent them which is a lease so it's i mean this is like the golden era to be self-managing your properties because it's just once you wrap your head around it and get the systems down it is so easy yeah awesome well Corey, thanks again for coming on this has been great thanks Catch- i love being on yeah. your show dan yeah so if anyone wants to reach out to you uh, g- give us your your blog and and tell us where someone can find you sure so i've got this little blog that i started as just kind of a hobby um so don't judge me on it there's not a lot of articles on it but the blog if you do want to get a hold of me it's called 10 to a million.com so it's 10 t e n the number 2 and then million, all one word, dot com. And that just represents buying 10 properties in 10 years to get your million dollars. So 10 to a million. If you want to look that up, I've got a link to Corey's website on my website. You can find it at rentalincomepodcast.com slash episode 196. Before we wrap things up, I want to make sure that we have the listener's question answered because I, I know we covered a lot today. So the question that the listener asked was why would somebody want to buy more than 10 rental properties? Because the listener was able to replace his income off 10 properties. And from listening to Corey's story, it doesn't seem like his goal was ever to leave his job. Um, His goal at the very beginning was to buy 10 properties and he would eventually have a million dollars in equity by buying 10 properties. Um, but it, his goal was never buy 10 properties so I can leave my job. And as Corey hit that goal, he started making bigger and bigger goals. And eventually his first cash flow goal was that he wanted to make a million dollars in rents. He thought that would be kind of a cool thing to see if he could do it. And if you listen to that goal, he wanted to make a million dollars in rents not because he wanted to quit his job and live on the beach somewhere. He wanted to make a million dollars in rents just to see if he could do it. And I'm sure that does help him and it it does give him security. But it, it's almost like it's not about the money. This is something that Corey really enjoys doing. And he also really enjoys his job. But the combination of having this extra income source, 
allows him to only take clients on that he he wants to work with. And I think it overall just adds more enjoyment to his life. But Corey's goal doesn't sound like it's to retire early and sit on a beach somewhere. Corey likes his work. He he likes working and he loves doing real estate. And this is really what he enjoys doing. And I think having enough money so that you can really do what you enjoy, I, I, I think that gives a lot of freedom. So um, that's my take on it. And um, I, I think Corey's got a, a great story. Um, all right. So before we, we get out of here, I got two more things for you. The first one is you if you are looking to buy rental properties, it's really important to get the right financing in place. You want to make sure you work with a lender that has experience working with investors and someone that's going to be able to get the loan done. The lender that I recommend is Chaley Ridge from Ridge Lending Group. She's actually an investor herself, and she's a uh, a really good lender that only works with investors. She's got a special offer just for our listeners. If you reach out to her at ridgelendinggroup.com, that's R-I-D-G-E, lendinggroup.com, and mention Rental Income Podcast, she will waive all of the pre-qualification fees for your mortgage. That's ridgelendinggroup.com, R-I-D-G-E, lendinggroup.com, NMLS 42056. The other thing that I want to mention is about a new app that I've been using called Blinkist. If you're like me, there's a lot of great business and real estate books that you want to read, but it's just hard to find the time to sit there and read them. Well, I've been using this app called Blinkist, and it is the absolute greatest thing that I have ever found. Basically, what they do is they take books and they summarize it so that in 15 minutes, you can listen to all the key takeaways and need to know information in a book. Or if you prefer to read, you can read all of the key takeaways. Um, it, it really saves so much time and allows me to consume so many books that I, I just wouldn't have had the time to listen to. And you know what I, what I do is when I'm driving somewhere, I'll just pull up the Blinkist app, I'll look for a book, download it real quick, and listen to it. This week, I've uh, been able to listen to two different books. The first one is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. It's a classic that I've always wanted to read, but just never really found the time to do it. But in 15 minutes, I was able to get all the key takeaways. The other one that I listened to was um, a book that I've read multiple times, but I always like to review it. Um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. It's a book we talk about on the podcast all the time. Um, and it, I, I think it's always good to go back and review the concepts. And I always pick up new things. So that that was really beneficial to listen to that that to that book again. Right now, for a limited time, Blinkist has a special offer just for our listeners. If you go to Blinkist.com slash rental income, you can start your seven-day free trial. That's Blinkist, spelled B-L-I-N-K-I-S-T, Blinkist.com slash rental income to start your seven-day free trial. Blinkist.com slash rental income. It's a really great service. I, I don't see why you wouldn't at least try it out for, for seven days and uh, check out a couple of books. Well, thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. We'll be back with a new episode next Tuesday. My name is Dan Lane, and this has been the Rental Income Podcast.